Welcome to our design presentation on tracing thresholds, landscape production. Last semester, we developed a design strategy that linked Tuti Island in Khartoum, Sudan, to the Nile River Basin, where we considered the different rituals that could be situated within the shifting landscape. These shifts are either caused from urban or natural influences, of which found more prominence at the Hadam Centre Catalyst. The landscape is relatively young in terms of spatio-temporal language, so the atavistic quality of the site appears more as traces on the surface as opposed to a deeply layered unconsciousness like our project last year. The introduction of Tuti Bridge in 2008 has not only introduced the other to the island, but has caused the bank erosion to pivot where it meets the ground, consuming the agricultural grain. However, one trace remains persistent, which we identified as the agricultural line that connected subsidiary pathways across the landscape. This production of the landscape creates conditions for intervention, thus defining our site not as a deeply reproduced landscape, but a prequel of sorts to our spatio-temporal methodology, creating the conditions for history to persist rather than allowing the spatio-temporal landscape to be er eradicated. Our dissertations looked into the threshold conditions of the landscape and rituals which we have developed further through three sources to create our definition of threshold as the following. A threshold brings unconsciousness to consciousness, whether this is the nature of a limit or a point of recognition. The design intervention creates threshold spaces with a degrading agricultural landscape to bring about moments of recognition towards people and place. Therefore, the program takes on the responsibility of ori orientating other and self towards the traditional use of natural clay and palm that defines spaces of intergenerational knowledge in the face of increasing non environmentally friendly materials, such as plastics and concrete, strengthening their cultural security and tradition and accepting the dialogue with other. Zia pots occur all over the island and throughout the Nile River basin, acting as thresholds between public and private. They are used to store drinking water, which also acts as an environmental cooling device. The Zeopod is a mnemonic device of generational knowledge that connects the islanders with loved ones who are not buried on the island. Intergenerational knowledge and symbolism are also embedded within palm frond grass, particularly where a woven pattern can evoke different meanings depending on the colour and weave, adding further cultural identity as a layer over the Zeopods. The riverine date palms provide dates of regenerative properties both in terms of food health and as pollution absorbents. Both palm and date pit ash can be used in construction. Palm ash is typically used in concrete and date pit ash in bricks due to their faster degradability. Any water flowing through the bricks is cleaned through the embedded ash from the brick. Similarly beneficial, the reduced usage of cement and concrete reduces the embodied carbon in constructing new buildings on the island. The plan breaks away from our previous linear form. Instead of aligning self and other on a tooting grid, the deconstructivist form abstracts the plan based on the aforementioned agricultural traces and alignments with the grid of the bridge, juxtaposing the tooting alignment with their island. The lower level is embedded within the landscape, carving out the sand and soil that is continually infilled to prevent water reaching the bridge. The building embeds itself within the ground, bringing people into rather than over the skin of the landscape. Both water and sand flows and blows into the building at particular thresholds to highlight the fragile condition of the landscape. The upper levels frame the surrounding landscape, whether these are the Nile Rivers, Tuti Island or Greater Khartoum. The design is composed of four building components, plastic reproduction, clay production, the cenotaph, and palm production. The palm entrance initiates the journey, where the facade evokes the surrounding palm trees with a lightweight canopy and heavy base, made from palm weave sand and ash bags, creating an active facade for those constructing within the surrounding area of the island and as a response to flooding. Palm frond poles create a permeable skin between the landscape and the industrial heart of the building, which can be used as scaffolding for local brick construction. The linear facade creates void cuts into the palm creek backdrop, which has been cast by the palm fronds. This section aligns with the first agricultural trace that cuts through the line, the brick floors extending out into the landscape as markers. Upon entering the building, the floor becomes sand, juxtaposing the hapticity of the landscape. Here, the palm and date pits are burned and the ash and imported sand are placed into palm bags. A water channel fed by the sakia seen in the background provides a place to wash and cool down. The interior of the palm production building emulates the proportionality of the palm trees, from the height and curve of the canopy to the thickness of the trunks and the permeable masonry walls, representing the thin rays of light through the fronds. Exiting the building, the vernacular brick archway is highlighted by the palm creek, also emulating palm tree proportions. The other side of the building is separated by the agricultural cut, where the floor becomes sand, falling into gaps that lead below, where the palm weave mats are stored in a cool space for longevity. The split creates a space where the palm fronds and dates are cut and separated into their constituent parts. The undulating floor creates moments for soaking palm fronds and weaving. 
greening and drying out the dates and pits. The Sina Tap is a public landscape component carved into the landscape, broken up by the agricultural lines with the base of the walls rendered in date pit ash clay, cleaning the water that is allowed to flow into the spaces. Raised above the highest flood level are seats and zir pots that create landmarks for inhabiting the water. This space becomes the fold job between the palm and clay productions, using the palm to wrap and protect the clay of the pots, both emulating symbols within their craft, celebrating the intergenerational knowledge of the island and providing an environmentally cool landscape. This space sinks into the ground where the sand blows against the lightweight palm weave facade. These intimate circular spaces disassociate from the grids, focusing the attention on the craft and with one another to create strong mnemonic bonds over the craft of the Zeopods. The new cuts forming the self-workshop spaces form a threshold between the Nile flood and the Tutians, bringing them to the level of the water, but simultaneously allowing the construction of Zeopods to continue. The date pit ash clay brick walls adjacent to the water's edge embody the past shifting edges to form pit traps for silt and clay deposits to fall into. Retaining the island's edge, these extend up to the basement level that sits at the 16.5 metre flood warning level to act as the extension of the existing tight network to extend the alert to the southeastern edge. The overhead palm canopy system shades the clay bricks below, extending their lifespan while simultaneously allowing heat to escape through the zipper openings located along the arch, juxtaposing the workshops for other, where the heavy and light proportions swap, framing the surrounding landscape through the palm and weave screens. The cuts facing out onto the water's edge in the clay store are positioned at the existing agricultural paths. The ground construction of sand allows for the high seasoned water levels to wash deposits into the central pit, but allows the water to permeate back through, leaving materials for clay production. The thick clay walls resemble a zeer construction with a central cavity of sand so that water can be added to keep the stored clay deposit cool and pliable for use. At the end of the agricultural line, at the water's edge, the plastic reproduction building is where plastic is collected from the Nile rivers and recycled, either into crafted products or into bricks. The plastic mulching is powered by the Norea, a water wheel, that grunts from the movement of the water, which shifts when the blue and white Nile shift in power. The building form projects the sound of the Norea, creating an audible threshold over the tire system. Fishermen on the Nile waters are paid to collect plastic, and in this scheme spread date pit ash to clean the waters. Plastic is sorted, cleaned, mulched and pressed into bricks using the power of the water. The future conditions of the project would have visualised the erosive power on the different building elements to reveal the different material skins of the design, each with different lifespans. The palm lasting three to seven years, clay bricks at 30 years, palm creep between 50 to 75 years and plastic lasting well beyond a thousand years.